If you have your Bibles with you, we'd ask you to turn to the book of 1 Kings. 1 Kings uh, chapter 19, and we're going to begin reading in verse 13. 1 Kings chapter 19, beginning in verse 13, the Bible says, And it was so, when Elijah heard it, that he wrapped his face in his mantle, and went out, and stood in the entering of the cave, and behold, there was a voice. And behold, there came a voice unto him, and said, "What doest thou here, Elijah?" Now drop down to verse eighteen. Yet I have, yet I have let, yet I have left me seven thousand in Israel, all the knees which have not bowed unto Baal, and every mouth which have not kissed him. So he departed thence and found Elisha the son of Shaphat who was plowing with twelve yoke of oxen before him and he was with the twelfth and Elijah passed by him and cast his mantle upon him. And he left the oxen and ran after Elijah and said, Let me I pray thee kiss my father and my mother and then will I follow thee. And he said unto him, Go back again for what have I done to thee? And he returned back from him, and took a yoke of oxen, and slew them, and boiled their flesh with the instruments of the oxen, and gave unto the people, and they did eat. Then he arose and went after Elijah, and ministered unto him. Let's pray. Dear Lord, we thank you and praise you and give you glory and honor for all that you do to us. For us, Lord, we praise you for that. Lord God, this morning we pray for help and strength that you'd allow us to preach what you've given us to preach, Lord, and that you'd send the Holy Spirit this way, Lord, that you'd give us the strength and the power to set every thought aside and for a short time just be able to center in on you. Lord God, uh, we praise you, we thank you, and we lift you up this morning, uh, knowing that you are in control of all things, and we give you glory and praise for it, for it's in Christ's name we do pray, amen. Now, uh, fairly familiar verses of Scripture, but we're going to be preaching this morning on how to walk close to the Lord. Um, a lot of people uh, say they want that when they don't. They say they want a, a close relationship, and they say they want to be with the Lord, but when it comes down to it, uh, they're not necessarily ready to give up what's necessary to give up, to set things aside uh, that the Lord is not pleased with. Uh, going back to our text verse, just to show uh, that every one of us gets far from the Lord sometimes, and, and every one of us are not always where we need to be in following Him, in uh, the 13th verse is when Elijah is hiding from Jezebel in a little cave because he believed what the devil told him. And you know, very often that is our problem. Whatever instrument that the, the devil sends you what, your way, you believe that over God. You believe that over God, what God's Word is, uh, uh, has written out for you. And when that threat comes, when that danger comes, we set all the side of the Word of God and we believe what the devil has to say. You know what the Bible says this morning? It says, I will never leave you and I will never forsake you. And we need to claim that. So when you feel alone, uh, remember that. Do you think as John was on the Isle of Patmos uh, writing down the revelation that he felt long, uh, alone? I don't think so. Because the Bible says that uh, I was in the Spirit on the Lord's day. Now he had every reason to be lonely and he had every reason to be discouraged, but he wasn't. And you know why he wasn't? Of his close walk with the Lord. So the first thing that we can see really uh, an evaluation of where your closeness lies is your reaction when trouble comes your way. Because trouble is coming. So we find that even the man that Elijah was, and I personally believe he was even a closer prophet than Elisha. Uh, uh, we know Elisha did more miracles than he did, but that doesn't mean his relationship was closer with the Lord. They both had incredibly low, close relationships with the Lord. 
But I believe Elijah was a little closer. So looking at that, even a close man of God has this, has this time where he believes the devil. He believes the devil's agent and we find him running from the devil and the famous verse, the famous words in my mind, what, what doest thou here, Elijah? You know what Elijah was doing? Nothing. You know, you can't preach the gospel from a cave. You can't witness to people from a cave. You can't be seen as a testimony from a cave. So what doest thou here, Elijah? You're doing nothing. And you know what? Most of the time today, if we're not very careful, we get a little reclusive ourselves, and we want to kind of hide when the devil comes out against us. And that is the situation that he found himself in. And uh, <clears throat> he didn't give up. Now, a lot of people, when they get in situations like this, they feel like they've let the Lord down. They feel like they're no longer useful. Uh, they just stop. But I want you to see that that was not Elijah's uh, approach at all. Uh, drop down uh, to verse uh, 18. The Bible says this, God reminding him, Yet I have 7,000 in Israel... All the deeds which have, have not bowed unto Baal, and every mouth which have not kissed him. So I want you to see that when the next time you think you're alone, there are others out there. There are other individuals serving the Lord. You may, you may, uh, you may think you're alone, but you're not alone. You know, the Bible promises this. The Lord Jesus Christ Himself said, On this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. So you know what? That, that guarantees the faith, doesn't it? That guarantees there will be people hanging on. However, the Lord Jesus Christ uh, says, When the Son of Man cometh, will He find faith? Not the faith. Will He find faith in the earth? And, and so, he, he makes that question. So, we find that at this point, Elijah gets a little rejuvenated. And maybe he, he, he claps, clasps on again to the faith that he once uh, had. And the reason why in verse 18 he says, uh, Yet I have led me 7,000 in Israel, all knees which have not bowed unto Baal, and every mouth which have not kissed him. So he, once he was reminded of this, once he was plugged back into what the Lord would have him to do, so he, meaning Elijah, departed thence and found Elisha. Now, I want you to see that already he had another mission from God. When you're ready, when, you're, when you get your mind off this world, there is another mission somewhere that God has you for. And so he, uh, he got reconnected with God. He got back in God's will. He, got a, uh, he, uh, he had the relationship that he needed with God. And immediately, his job is to find the the one that would come in after him, and he went and did it. See, uh, when we get off what we're doing, and we get out of our cave, then we begin to do what the Lord would have us to do. Uh, uh, verse verse number uh, nineteen. Uh, so he departed from thence and found Elisha the son of Shaphat. And who was plowing with twelve yoke of oxen with him? Now we're going to look at uh, how Elisha becomes closer and closer to the Lord, and Elijah does too, to the point of being caught over. But I want you to see, and a lot of people miss this, as, as you're calling from Elisha, that Elisha was a very wealthy man. And the reason I say this, he wasn't just a farm worker because, see, the farm worker wouldn't have had the, had the authority to slay those oxen and create a sacrificial altar out of their yoke. And he did that. And the reason he could do that is he was the owner of them. And, and we as the Lord's people, one of the most dangerous situations we can find ourselves is getting caught up in what we have. 
getting caught up in, in, in our home, getting caught up in our items, getting caught up in, 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 in what we have there, that is a dangerous situation to be in. It's to be so happy and proud and, and, and glad of the things you have. And so we find that it probably was a little difficult for Elisha to leave. You, you know why missionaries are not going today? It's too difficult to leave. You know why the Lord's houses are largely empty and not just New Testament? All around the area, you know why they're on the dwindle? It's because people are, are too tied to this world. It costs them too much to serve the Lord. And Elijah passed by him and cast his mantle, which was the Jewish prayer cloth, upon him. Now he just walking by, uh, he sees God's man. There was not no, anything noteworthy about Elisha. He had never even heard Elisha speak. He had never seen him do anything. It wasn't like he knew who he was. But he knew this presence of God was on him, so he threw the mantle on him. And that, that changed Elisha's life. You, you know what? Uh, you will never be of any real service to God if you're not genuinely saved. You, you know why there's contention in most of the Lord's churches today between individuals and between groups and churches? It's because there's lots of lost people around. People who are saved and are on the mind of the cross will get along. And people that have their mind on this world won't. You know, there's one agenda of the church, and that's going into all the world. There's millions of agendas out there, isn't it? And, and you know what? what? What I have found is everybody has their own agenda. And you can't let that interfere with the things that the Lord's given you to do. But often we do. Often we, you know, I want to do this, I want to do that. Well, so what? What does God want? And so we need to be a people that is in unison all the time. Verse 20, So, and, and, and he left the oxen and ran after Elijah and said, Let me, I pray thee, kiss my father and my mother, then I will follow thee. Now, I want you to see that he addresses some things that will interfere with your service to the Lord. If you have a mission mind, it's going to interfere. And the first thing, you know what? You need to be careful of mama and daddy. Mama and daddy are not benevolent creatures. If they're saved and, and, and they're even plugged in a little bit, they're still not deity. They're still not God. And, and so what needs to happen, it, you know, uh, what, the Bible, what the Lord Jesus Christ, Christ say? He says, forsake all. Father, mother, houses, lands. That, that's how you become a missionary. That's how you become somebody that's fit for the Master's use. And, and, and so we find here that he's immediately, uh, he runs after him and says, let me say bye to Mama and Daddy. That's an imme immediate thing, is it not? But, it, but is it a legitimate thing? He said, let me, I pray thee, kiss my father and my mother, and then I will follow thee. So he was putting something before the Lord. And he said unto him, Go back again, for what have I done to thee? You, you know what? It, it's a sad, sad thing sometimes. And, and you think about uh, just even uh, 15 years ago, how many missionaries were out there? You couldn't even support them all. You had to be careful. You had to, you had to select the ones you thought needed the help. And you... Now we're down to nothing. You know, there are very few foreign missionaries out there. And there's nothing wrong uh, with supporting an established church. I know a lot of people that are putting their mission dollars that way. Well, they can call it a mission work if they want to, but it's not. They're being helpful, yes, but it is not a mission. And, and so we as the Lord's people... Isn't it a sad thing that, uh, that we don't have missionaries to support? You have a lot just like Elisha 
want to go back and kiss mom and dad. We need to be very careful about that, do we not? Nothing wrong with a good, strong relationship with your mother and daddy. You're supposed to, you're supposed to respect them and you're supposed to uh, try to support them, but they cannot interfere with your walk with the Lord. And he, meaning Elisha, returned back from him, meaning Elijah, and took a yoke of oxen and slew them. In verse 21, he begins to realize that the value is not in this life. The value is not what's important here. And to show that, he comes up and he cuts the, he cuts the throat of two oxen, two, probably the very ones he had been riding on, and he makes a sacrificial altar. You know what? If it is your mind to serve the Lord, you're going to have to make a sacrifice. See, we, we, we live in a day and age today, you know, when the Lord Jesus, well, He was your spiritual sacrifice. He was your blood atonement, but you will make a daily sacrifice. You know, you know how many times I have surrendered to preach? Every day for the last 24 years. Every day. Because you know what? <laughs> I'd like to quit sometimes. There, 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 there's nothing enamored in being a preacher, but it is a burden that, that I have, and I will continue as long as... So, as he's slaying these oxen, that's the first time that Elisha begins to surrender to the will of God, and begins to surrender to, to the ministry in which God gave him, and that's exactly what every one of us needs to do on a daily basis. Now go with me uh, to 1 Kings uh, 21, uh, verse uh, 17. 1 Kings 21 and verse 17. In the interim, they have a little encounter uh, with Jezebel. Uh, 1 Kings 21 and verse 17, the Bible says, uh, the Bible says this, And the word of the Lord came to Elijah the Tishpite, saying, now, again, they're both sharing a ministry at this point. Elijah is teaching Elisha. And again, because of his closeness to the Lord, Elijah is hearing from God. You, you know when you can tell you have a spiritual problem is when you quit hearing from God. Yeah. Now, whether it's through prayer or preaching or whatever, uh, uh, when you quit hearing from God, you have a spiritual problem. You, you have an issue somewhere. And so we find in his final days that Elijah is plugged in and so he gets a message from God that he is to share with others. Arise, go down to meet Ahab, king of Israel, which is in Samaria. Behold, he is in the vineyard of Naboth, whether he is gone down to possess it. Now, I want you to see, uh, you know, sometimes uh, I think, well, that would be interesting ability to have. And then I think, no, I don't want that. To know what the enemies of God are up against. To know uh, when they've said falsely against you. To know when they're stirring up trouble. Because see, Elijah had the ability, and he says, you know what? Huh. Ahab's causing problems. You need to go down there and address it. Uh, you know, uh, that's a hard thing to do. Can you imagine going to the leader of, of your nation, uh, President Trump, and saying, look, uh, you have an issue. You are a problem. That, that's what Elijah was called to do. Now, you can't do that in the strength of the flesh. You cannot do that in the energy of the flesh. You have to be plugged in. You have to be in the relationship that Elijah shared with our Lord God at this time in that closeness that, that every one of us that are redeemed should desire. He was in that and he heard from God. Verse 18, Arise, go to meet Ahab, the king of Israel, which is in Samaria. Behold, he is in the vineyard of Naboth, whether he is gone down to possess it. And thou shalt speak unto him, saying, Thus saith the Lord, Thou hast killed, and also taken, hast thou killed, and also taken possession? And thou shalt speak unto him, Thus saith the Lord, In the place where the dogs lick the blood of Naboth, shall dogs lick thy blood 
even thine. Now, uh, I'll get, I, the Lord's given me some pretty rough sermons over the years, but He's never given me the one to say, listen, what? Yeah, you know what, King? You're going to die. They're gonna, the dogs are going to be licking up your blood. See, that's not a glory hallelujah message, is it? But He was faithful to it. See, when you're plugged in, you're going to get the good, the bad, and the ugly. And uh, you know what people want today? And the older I get, the more they see, I see it. They want to be told how good they are. Uh, they want to hear that everybody in the whole world is going to glory. You know what? Nothing farther could be from the truth. Yeah. Very, very. You know, the Bible says, and few, few be there that find it. Because nobody wants to go on the merit of Christ. Right. They want to go on something else. If it's works or, or saying a sinner's prayer or, or whatever they've got out there. People don't want to go on the merit of Christ. And the reason why, it's our nature to be able, want to be able to do it ourselves. To accomplish it for ourselves. And, and, and so we find that this message is kind of rough, but if you want to walk with the Lord, there's going to be rough days. There are going to be difficult times. There are going to be hardships along the way. And, and now, now, if you're satisfied with, a, with, with just a smooth, you know, that's what everybody wants. Uh, you know what they said? Uh, in the day of Elijah even, speak unto us smooth things. If you want that, you can have that and not be close to the Lord. But if you want to be close to Him, there's going to be hard days. There's going to be difficult times. There's going to be uh, events in your life that doesn't go uh, pleasant like you hoped it would. There's going to be those times. Verse 19. Uh, verse 20. And Ahab said to Elijah, Hast thou found me, O enemy? And he answered, I, I, I have found thee, because thou hast sold thyself to work evil in the sight of the Lord. Now I want you to notice two unusual things. Uh, first of all, he says, yeah, I found you. Uh, you know what? The Bible says this, your sins will find you out. If you're, uh, if you're doing something ungodly, It'll come out. And you know why? If you, if you belong to God, it has to be that way. Now, if you can keep those little uh, feelings of malice within yourself, you might not be saved. Because see, for Ahab, they come back. And you know, uh, this, this is my own opinion. I think Ahab was saved. I think he got very far out of God and gave his life for him. Jezebel was a rebel. Jezebel uh, was a lost woman. And the reason I say Ahab was saved is he was actually excused from this. He did not suffer this punishment at this time. And, 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 and so we see then that, uh, that, that he tells him exactly how it is. At the threat of death, at the threat of annihilation, he's faithful to the Word of God. He's faithful to what God has said. He's still, he's still faithful even to then. And that is what we have to be if you want to walk close. Verse 22. And will come unto, and, and will make thine house like the house of Jeroboam the son of Nebat, and like the house of Basha the son of Ahiah, for the provocation wherewith thou hast provoked me to anger and made Israel to sin. Now I want you to notice two things. He says, yeah, you're going to be judged. You're going to be judged like these other individuals. And he names them, including Jeroboam. And then I want you to see that the... the, the uh, he says, because you caused them to sin. Uh, he caused Israel to sin. To commit a national sin. You know what? <laughs> The United States has a lot of national sins to pay for. Uh, first and foremost is abortion. You know what? We'll pay dearly for that. Yeah. Uh, queer marriage. We're going to pay dearly for that one. Um, we, we need to understand that 
that there's a national bearing of sin. You know what? That ought to motivate us to be missionary because I don't want to be under a national bearing of sin. And the only thing I know that I can do to help alleviate that is preach the gospel. Right? Because regenerate people don't do stuff like that. And so then we as the Lord, if we want this closeness, just remember this. Many times you're going to have to speak the Word of God. The Word of God in the energy of God. Now, if you're in the flesh and all you're doing is popping your mouth off, you know what? God's not going to stand with you. But if you, if you truly have a, mean, a means and a mind to serve God, uh, then certainly He will. Go with me to 2 Kings. 2 Kings chapter 2 in the very first verse. 2 Kings chapter 2. Now, again, in the interim there were some events that showed the judgment of Ahab. It showed the judgment of Jezebel and her ultimate death. You know what? You're going to learn some, you're going to learn some lessons simply by time. You're going to see God's judgment come in, in different ways. Just give it time. Uh, Madam Marilyn O'Hara, O'Hara here in the United States that calls prayer to be taken out of our public school system. You know what? She's missing and nobody ever did find her. All she did was send letters for help and text messages or back then it was email. And you know what? There was nobody to help her. Nobody responded. Uh, took about 25 years, but it came, did it not? It, it, see, just be patient in serving the Lord. You'll see things come. You'll see it come to pass. So in this interim, and I don't know how long it was, some people suggest three or four years as Elisha is walking with Elijah and he's learning and he sees the decimation of Ahab and Jezebel and he sees that our God is indeed able. The whole time it was tightening his relationship. You know what? I bet you that day they saw the dogs lapping up Jezebel's blood, he remembered, hey, you know what? This was said in a sermon four years ago. I'm seeing it to pass. See, we need, to, we need to be able to pick up on those nuggets so that our faith will be validated. You, you, you know what will validate your faith? Everybody says that book. Some. But you know what will validate you? is life experience. If you've been hungry and seen the Lord provide food out of nowhere, that's life experience. Just reading about the water, I mean the bread and the five loaves and two fishes, man, that's thrilling. But not having your own hungry belly filled is something different, is it not? Be patient on the Lord. Wait on Him. So we find by this point that Elisha and Elijah uh, have this great relationship and it's about to end. It's about to be done for. Verse uh, 2 Kings 1, verse 1. Then Moab rebelled against Israel after the death of Ahab. And Ahaziah fell down through a lattice in his upper chamber that was in Samaria and was sick. And he sent messengers and said unto him, Go inquire of Baalzebub, the god of Ekron, whither I shall recover of this disease. Now, you, you get the picture there, uh, asking the world's opinion. You know what? The world's opinion of you doesn't matter. Only, only thing that you should really be plugged into, and, and this is what it's going to have to be, if you want this relationship like Elijah and Elisha enjoying with God, is forget about this world. Because you know what? Newsflash, they're not going to like you. If you stick to the stuff, they're not going to like you. Uh, and, and, and so we find that uh, we find this individual, instead of seeking the face of God, instead of desiring to hear from God, he goes ask, he goes ask the world. And the angel of the Lord uh, said to Elijah the Tishbite, Go 
up to meet the messengers of the king of Samaria and say to them, is it not because there is no God in Israel that we go to inquire of Beelzebub, the God of Ekron? Again, a sermon directly dealing with that sin. Now therefore, thus saith the Lord, Thou shalt not come down from thy bed on which thou art gone up, but thou shalt surely die. And Elijah departed. Now, this is, this is his last sermon, really. This is the last time that you'll uh, hear, um, that you'll hear uh, him give much of input. And Elijah's last sermon that anybody hears and that Elisha enjoys and gets some and, and gets some teaching from is just like another sermon he heard. Listen, buddy, you're going to die. You know what idolatry will bring you down to? Idolatry always brings death. Now you follow it down through the ages of the nation of Israel when they were up in the groves, it brought death. When they had uh, that snake that Moses had created down at the temple, it brought death, did it not? See, I don't, and, and, and you say, oh, well, Brother Larry, I would never be an idolatrous. Well, if you're serving a God that you can control, you're an idolater. If you're serving one that you can demand to be saved, you're an idolater. If you're serving a God that all it is is in your back pocket, yes, you are an idolater. And so we find that uh, the last sermon was not a warm fuzzy, but it meant walking with God. And that's where we need to understand and be today that we are <laughs> walking with God will cost you something. 2 Kings chapter 2 in the first verse. Time to depart. And it came to pass when the Lord would take up Elijah into heaven by a whirlwind that Elijah went with Elisha from Gilgal. Now, I want you to see... If one morning you woke up, because see, Elijah was a, lot, was a man just like unto us. Uh, I think it says him, and Elisha, or was it Eli Elijah or Elisha, was in 2 Peter, uh, was a man like unto our own flesh. And he prayed that it rained not, and it rained not for the space of three and a half years. So, you think about him being like us, but his walk with the Lord so close that he says in prayer one morning, or however they communicated, I'm going to take you up in the world. You know what? You'd have to be pretty close to God to believe that, wouldn't you? I mean, you really would. That was a thing that it never happened. Well, take it back in the old world, it, 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 it happened when, uh, well, some way he was taken. We don't know exactly how, but it had been a long time ago, hadn't it? <coughs> and, and he said, so uh, very confident in the God that they serve, they both take off walking, knowing, and, and there must have been a location that was given because they go along this trail, they go from city to city with a specific destination in mind. Now, I say that to ask you this, if, they, if God said, Larry, I'm going to take you and I'm going to scoop you up, you need to be in St. Louis by tomorrow. Would I have the faith to take off toward St. Louis? You see what I'm saying? That's what it took. You know, uh, not only did Elijah believe it, Elisha must have too. Because Elisha was with you. See, you won't get faith like that from a routine relationship with the Lord. You only get faith like that. You only have that believing trust when you're close to Him on a daily basis. And it came to pass when the Lord would take up Elijah into heaven by a whirlwind that Elijah went with Elisha from Gilgal. And Elijah said unto Elisha, Tarry here, I pray thee, for the Lord has sent me to Bethel. And Elisha said unto him, As the Lord liveth, and as thy soul liveth, I will not leave thee. So they went on down to Bethel. Now, I ask you this, what your, your level of faithfulness depends on um, how much you believe. 
You know, you know who's here for every service? All depends on how much you believe, does it not? Because you see, Elisha got the invitation to stay back. And every day, we get the invitation to hold back a little. Mm -hmm. He got the invitation to stay put, but he didn't. You know what? You'll have the invitation tomorrow just to let it go a little bit. Oh, you know what? Does it matter? Who really cares? You'll get those thoughts and you'll get those invitations from the devil, but I want you to see that Elisha wasn't going to have anything to do with it. Verse 3, And the sons of the prophets that were at Bethel came to Elisha and said unto him, Knowest thou that the Lord will take away thy master from thy head today? And he said, Yea, I know it. Hold ye your peace. Now, have you ever thought, how did all these people know? How did everybody know that Elijah was leaving by a whirlwind? He told them. Simply it. <laughs> now, you put yourself in the, faith, in the place of those 50 prophets, and I come in here next Sunday and say, Hey church, I'm going up by a whirlwind in St. Louis tomorrow. Do y'all want to go watch it with me? How many would come? You see what I'm saying? Uh, that takes a lot of faith. And you know how many people went with him the full, the full measure? One. One individual. And you know what? <laughs> it would be our, uh, our inclination today. That, that boy needs his head examined. Right? But, uh, so then we as the Lord's people, we need to simply, if we want that closeness to the Lord, we need to believe the Word of God, exactly what it says, plus nothing, minus nothing, embrace it for what it is. Verse 4, And Elijah said unto him, uh, Elisha, tarry here, I pray thee, for the, uh, for the Lord hath sent me to Jericho, the third city mentioned. And he says, As the Lord liveth, and as thy soul liveth, I, uh, I will not leave thee, so they came to Jericho. Now, I want you to notice the wording, because we jump over that. As thy soul liveth. Now, he wasn't talking about the body, because he said the soul. Is that not right? <coughs> See, you know why he was saying that as thy soul liveth? It's because Elijah was plugged in. You ever been in that situation? You barely can keep your eyes open at church and focus in on what's saying? Your soul ain't living. <laughs> Your soul ain't living. See, Elijah was so plugged in Elisha enjoyed being around it, didn't he? When, when you find somebody that's plugged in, if you have a sermon occasionally where you know the man of God is really plugged in, it's a pleasure and a help to be there, is it not? That's how Elisha was in regard to Elijah. He knew he was plugged in. He says, your soul's on fire this morning. I'm not going to let you go. I'm not going to let you do anything else. I'm going to be here with you. That's a wonderful, wonderful thing to say. Verse 5, And the sons of the prophets were at Jericho, came to Elisha, and said unto him, Knowest thou that the Lord will take away thy master from thy head today? And he answered, Yea, I know it. O ye your peace. Very same thing in every little town. So you know what? That says also to me that Elijah preached the same sermon, I'm leaving on more than one occasion. On more than one place. You know what? That takes a lot of faith, don't it? Do you think they laughed and jeered at him? I believe they did. They did Noah, did they not? What rain, Noah? <laughs> you boat your buildings awful far away from the sea. See what I'm saying? If I came in here and then maybe Brother Trescott invited me to preach over at Sunnyview tonight, and I said, Sunny Viewings, I'm headed out of here. God's going to take me up by a whirlwind tomorrow at St. Louis. Do y'all want to come and watch? How many would go? Now, I will say one more thing about this, and we'll move on. 
They didn't know for sure how he was going. You ever seen anybody die? Everybody, anybody ever seen literally the last breath go out? Not necessarily pleasant to watch, is it? But Elijah was plugged in and Elisha wanted to see it. You know what? That's, that's the way we ought to be. That's the way we ought to desire this morning it is to be that plugged in into what the will of God for our life is. Verse 6, And Elijah said unto him, Terry, I pray you here, for the Lord hath sent me to Jordan. And he said, As the Lord liveth and as thy soul liveth, I will not leave thee. And the two went on. Now, I want you to see this is his last invitation to stand back and, and it was over a flooded river. Have you ever wondered, and, and there's no question, again, the full faith, the faith that we desire of Elijah and Elisha, nobody asked how that they, it never even entered Elisha's mind, how are we going to get across that flooded river? And you know why it didn't? Because he was so plugged in. You know what? He had no idea it was going to split open. He'd never seen anything like that. But he believed God was going to do, it, do something, didn't he? See, you will quit worrying about personal safety when you're plugged in. Financial safety and personal safety will be gone because you have everything you need. At the foot of the Lord Jesus Christ, I tell you, Mary and Martha learned that lesson, did they not? And so we ought to learn it too. Verse 7, And fifty men of the sons of the prophets went and stood to view afar off, and they, stood, and they too stood by Jordan. Now, one to fifty. You, you, you know what most people want to do? View afar off. I don't want to be totally detached, but I sure don't want to walk through that river of Jordan neither. You see what I'm saying? Most people are pretty happy with that, that just that, that detachment and, and serving the Lord from a safe distance. You know what? The true believer, the plugged in believer, will never be satisfied with that. Now, if you can be satisfied being one of the 50 Begin to pray. Pray for dissatisfaction. Pray for, uh, pray for uh, a desire to serve Him more because we ought not to be satisfied with what those 50 men were, uh, were satisfied with. And Elijah took his mantle and wrapped it together and, and smote the waters and they divided hither and thither so that they too went on dry ground. Now, I want you to think, it is similar to the Red Sea crossing, but it's not, it's not really like that either. Because the, uh, the, the Red Sea crossing, that's like a big salty lake. And it's not really fed by anything. It's fed by rainwater. And so, if you cross the sea, it just piled up on both sides, right? But what does the Cumberland River do? It runs. Runs from the Cumberland City side up this way. And so, in man's idea, what's the problem with it going thither and hither? Well, is this side going to keep banking up? Because, see, rivers keep running. And Jordan is a swift river, it makes the Cumberland uh, look like a lake. So is it going to keep banking up? And is it going to stay there? And is the river going to go dry down on this end? You know what? It says that it opened up and that it just stood there and they walked across. You know, not consider... See, faith sets aside the limitations of man, doesn't it? So they walked on across. Uh, <laughs> you know, I don't know, maybe the, the river stopped for a minute. I have no idea. But I know that they walked on safely. You know, if the Lord can turn back the dial of the sun by ten minutes, He did pretty much what He wants to. And, and so we, we, we as the Lord's people, we need that kind of faith because if we want to experience the closeness that these two men can take trust, trust enough to walk through a river. And it came to pass when they were gone over, only when they 
they were gone over, four opportunities to stop. And it came to pass when they were gone over that Elijah said unto Elisha, Ask what I shall do for thee before I am taken away from thee. And Elijah said, I pray thee, let a double portion of thy spirit be upon me. Now, I want you to see that is a little s spirit. It is not the Holy Ghost. A spirit is how you present. Some people just present as a smart aleck, don't they? They can, they can say hello and then have a smart twist to it, you know? You met people like that. Whatever, and I believe it was a spirit of boldness that laid on Elijah. He was saying, I want to be bold as you are. I want to be able to present it. I want to be go, able to go into the palace and tell whoever my Ahab is, hey boy, you're going to die. That's what he wanted. Jezebel, the dog's going to eat your body. I want, I want to be that kind of man. You know what? We need, we need a desire for that this morning. We, uh, it, it, it's just have a spirit, not of just boldness, but a spirit of kindness and love that we can, that we can, deal, we can deal with situations when they come up like this. Verse 10, he says, Thou hast asked a hard thing, nevertheless, if thou see me when I am taken away from thee, it shall be unto thee, but if not, it shall not be so. And it came to pass, as they still went on. Now, have you ever thought, maybe Elisha thought, when are we going to, you know, because you're just walking and walking, and now they've crossed Jordan, and they're walking and walking and walking. In the flesh, begin to doubt, hey, is this really going to happen? <laughs> is he really going to be just scooped up into the clouds? What, what, what is this going to be? See, doubt will cripple your faith. And it will cripple your closeness. Just believe. Just believe and move on. Believe and trust God. Believe that He's able. Trust that He's, he's willing. Trust that He... That he is who he says he is. <coughs> and, and still went on and talked, and behold, there appeared a chariot of fire and horses of fire, and they parted them both asunder, and Elijah went up by a whirlwind into heaven. Now, uh, everybody says he went up by a chariot of fire. He did not. The chariot of fire split him open. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know what? I've never seen a chariot of fire, but I think it, 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 it would make the hair on my head stand up. And horses of fire. Literally, a horde, a flame in shape of a horse. You know what? That would get my attention quick. <clears throat> and it would be my inclination to run. Split them open. One of them over there, one of them over there, and Elijah goes up by the whirlwind or a cyclone or a tornado, whatever you want to call it. A whirlwind means it spins, it's a whirl. You know what? Uh, that's a pretty amazing thing to see, is it not? And the only way it happened was to stick with the Lord, stick with God's man, and, and, and continue on and believe. We, uh, we certainly ought to be those people today and desire these things. Verse 12, And Elisha saw it, and he cried, My father, my father, the chariot of Israel and the horsemen thereof. And he saw him no more, and he took hold of his own clothes and rent them in two pieces. And he took up the mantle of Elijah that fell from, the, that fell from him and went back and stood by the bank of Jordan. And he took the mantle of Elijah, which fell from him, and smote the waters, and said, Where is the Lord God of Elijah? And when he also had smitten the waters, and parted th hi hither and thither, and Elisha went over. Now that's a very unusual statement there. Did he not know God? Yeah, but he didn't know Him like Elijah did. You know what? I, I want to experience Christ like men of old, don't you? I, I, I've, read, I've read books about Baptist preachers 
that spent three or four hours on their knees, walking around on their knees in their building, praying that God might come down and meet with the people. I want some of that. Don't you? I, I want to be able to trust Him enough that if He says, Larry, you're going up by whirlwind, that I believe it. That I believe it. And, and you know, he, here's the pessimistic worldly view. Well, in the modern day, that doesn't happen. You don't know. <laughs> you know what? Our God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So that means if He wants to take somebody up by a whirlwind, yeah. He'll suck them straight up. Right. You know, I, I read of a thing, believe it or not, in the Lord's in the Wild book. I can't remember which one it was. I think, uh, I think these happy golden years. And it tells a story of the horrible cyclones they had out in South Dakota. And one boy was never found. His remains were never found even to this day. You know what? He might have just been caught up by a whirlwind. Now the flesh will tell you, oh, he got slammed somewhere out in one of those huge Dakota prairies and they just didn't find him. I don't know. But I do know this, our God's able. Sure. I know our God's able. So, this morning, do you want closeness? Two things on closeness. Number one, you're going to have to go, at, go after it. You're going to have to seek it and run after it with everything you've got. And then when the hindrances come, because they will, when the hardships come and all the emotions that this life has out there, when they come, ignore them. Because see, those are your hindrances. Those are your 50 prophets saying, don't you know your prophets, that your, your leaders going up today? And who did they, what form did they come in? Preachers. 50 prophets or 50 preachers. See, not everybody has your spiritual best interest in mind, do they? So what you need to do is just trust the Lord. What you need to do is just go forward.